I'd like to call to order our legislative meeting of January the 15th. Um, if we could um, introduce ourselves, that would be great. Hi, I'm Bridget Doherty, uh, communications manager. Leslie Hervey, interim clerk. Good afternoon, I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehouse. <laughs> County Administrator Jeff Aluto. Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh. Commissioner Reese. Hello, Hamilton County Commissioner Alicia Reese. Stephanie Summerall Dumas, President of the Hamilton County Board of County Commissioners. Um, we'll start out as we always do in our legislative meetings with a silent prayer. And then if you could please stand when we're done for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and I would just ask that you, as we cannot um, forget those who are being impacted by this virus um, that's going through our nation. Um, if you would just say a silent prayer, not only for our area, but the whole nation as the numbers continue to increase. So one moment for silent prayer. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'd like to make a motion to approve of the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. We have quite a few things on our agenda uh, today. We will move forward, but one thing that's really uh, dear to my heart are those employees who decide that they have a mission and uh, an assignment and they stay around long enough to make an impact. And uh, today, one of those uh, persons is Michelle Gibson. Is she here? Oh, she is here, very good. And so I would just like to read a little bit that came from the Planning and Development Department for her 25 years of service. Michelle started her career with Hamilton County in 1995. She now celebrates 25 years of committed service to the county. Her journey began in the Jobs and Family Services Department where she spent two years. After that time, she transferred to the Planning and Development Department where she has spent the last 23 years. Michelle started as permit tech, taking in and distributing building permits. The past year, Michelle has been promoted to the senior permit tech position. She plays a very important role every day in helping the public and her teammates. Michelle always has a smile on her face and is enjoyed by her coworkers and everyone who walks through the doors. She graces us daily with her larger than life personality and the story experiences. Michelle is a wonderful person who deserves to be recognized today. It is an honor to know and work with her. So Michelle, if you could come up. So would you like to say a few words? Um, no, I just want to say thank you. And I have enjoyed working for the county. Okay, very good. Maybe our colleagues may want to say something and then we have something for you we'll bring down. Okay. okay. Vice President Reese. Yes, um, I just want to say congratulations. Um, more importantly, I just want to say thank you. Uh, you came in and uh, worked your way up and um, certainly have helped a lot of people. Um, you also have uh, been very loyal to Hamilton County and the citizens of Hamilton County. Uh, the work that you do, I understand you developed a skill set that was very important to us to make sure that these buildings get moving forward and the permitting and all of that. Um, and so those who have to get permits and those things, I'm sure they really appreciate you. Um, and even in time when you, um, you know, came in and you weren't feeling the best, but you said, I want to show up for the citizens of Hamilton County. So with that, I just want to say congratulations and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. I echo the thanks uh, to you for sticking around for 25 years. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it does take um, a special person to, with dedication to do the, uh, any job for 25 years. So thank you so much, and I'm glad to be part of the rec recognition this afternoon. Thank, thank you. you. 
and we'd like to come down and take a picture with us okay. with you. Okay. So as we move forward in our agenda, we have a proclamation in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we celebrate him on January the 17th, this Monday coming up, and it was just appropriate to do it today. So we wouldn't miss it. This is our last meeting before that time. So you have, a, my colleagues, you have a proclamation in front of you. <clears throat> We certainly stand on his shoulders. Um, that's how we got up here. I mean, how, you know, three women, two African Americans. We're getting ready to appoint a African American uh, for the JFS director position. So we certainly stand on his shoulders. So I'll begin the proclamation. Whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born January the 15th. 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia, and was assassinated April the 4th, 1968. And whereas Dr. King grew up in the South under segregation, a policy that required Negroes to use separate facilities than whites and to attend different schools. He rightfully believed that the policy of segregation was unjust, and he spoke out openly about it. This is fogging up, I apologize. Um, he organized protests and marches to raise awareness and to try to affect change. Whereas he devoted his life to the advancement of civil rights and public service, he believed in a nation of freedom and justice for all and challenged all citizens to help build a more perfect union and live up to the purpose and potential of America. And... And whereas at the age of 26, Dr. King led the 381-day Montgomery bus boycott, which was widely regarded as the earliest protest on behalf of the civil rights in the United States, and set groundwork for other actions to bring about fair treatment to Negroes. And whereas after the boycott's end, Dr. King helped found the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, a highly influential civil rights organization that worked to end segregation throughout the South. Under Dr. King's leadership, the organization was also instrumental in the civil rights campaign in Birmingham, Alabama in the spring of 1963 and the peaceful march on Washington in August of that same year, during which King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. Whereas through his activism and inspirational speeches, Dr. King played a pivotal role in ending the legal segregation of Negro citizens in the United States, as well as the creation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And whereas a proponent of nonviolent protest, Dr. King received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 at the age of 35. And whereas Congressman John Conyers first introduced legislation for a commemorative holiday four days after Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. The legislation stalled and petitions endorsing the holiday containing six million names were submitted to Congress. And whereas Congressman Conyers and Rep. Shirley Chisholm resubmitted the King holiday legislation during each subsequent legislative session. Public pressure for the holiday mounted during the 1982 and 1983 civil rights marches in Washington. And whereas Congress passed the holiday legislation 
1983, which was then signed into law by President Ronald Reagan. Now therefore be proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners in Hamilton County, Ohio, does hereby recognize Monday, January the 17th, 2022, as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day in Hamilton County, and it is signed by all our commissioners. Thank you all. Ma Madam President. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as we go into Dr. King's holiday, and um, I'm certainly happy about our uh, proclamation, but I wanted to just uh, take a moment to really uh, highlight a couple of things because we still have a lot of the same struggles that Dr. King was fighting on uh, during that time. My family uh, marched with King and was very active, involved with Dr. King. And as we said in the proclamation, voting rights, open housing, affirmative action, economic justice, criminal justice, were all issues that he was fighting in the segregated South. Um, growing up in a household that was in the movement with Dr. King, my father was a part of Operation Breadbasket, the economic side of Dr. King. It really put uh, emphasis on kind of who I am. And I decided uh, once I went to Grambling State University and he had went to a black college that I would dedicate my celebration of King with action. And I've been very active in the voting rights um, issues. We are still fighting on the voting rights issues today. I had the honor of speaking at the 50th anniversary of Dr. King uh, anniversary, and we were talking about how to make voting rights permanent, and I came up with a voter bill of rights. We got 100,000 signatures to try to get it on the ballot, and today we're still fighting for the John Lewis Act, and I want to say that I'm calling for that act to be passed immediately uh, by the President and the Congress if we really are about Dr. King. I also want to say that Dr. King was not popular so young people that are watching, sometimes we water Dr. King down and feel like everybody loved Dr. King. Dr. King was an agitator. Dr. King was shaking it up. The law was putting Dr. King in jail. Elected officials had laws that were putting people in jail. And Dr. King, they challenged the laws. The busing situation. Um, Dr. King was fighting for us to be able to ride the bus equally. So a lot of those things that Dr. King's about is really in my DNA, and that's why uh, I focus my whole career, not just at Hamilton County Commission, but everything from Gramlin State University to today, to commit to shaking it up, sometimes not being popular, because the only way we can make change is sometimes we have to challenge the system and change the system. And so I think the work that we've been able to do here with the 513 relief bus, Dr. King would be happy even though we still have people that's got to get out of that pipeline, but we helped a lot of people, and we're still going to help. But to have a bus going out and really helping the needy, uh, the Black Music Walk of Fame, uh, being inclusive on the banks, that's 198 acres where African Americans came over for freedom, but when you went all the way through it, there was no African American besides the Freedom Center that's highlighted. We now are going to have a Black Music Walk of Fame challenging the numbers at the county and the city and the state of inclusion because we collect diverse taxes so diverse tax people should be able to participate and so that's why we challenge and say wait a minute 16 million dollars and we only spent 1400 with minority businesses that has to be challenged dr king would have challenged that and that would have been under his operation bread basket and certainly the workers uh, and i know all of us have been speaking up for the workers dr king died going with the workers, the blue collar workers, the street sweepers and those who pick up the trash every day. So um, that's where I come from and Dr. King was not popular when he was alive but he was right and going in the right direction and I would hope that everyone in their own capacity as we're given the speeches of the dream that we begin to take the action of the dream and as you mentioned today one of those actions in, for, in looking at inclusion within our department, which uh, we certainly had a motion last year and, and, and the numbers were not good. And today, being able to uh, appoint someone who comes from the community, came up out of the community, an African-American male uh, making history is a, certainly a step in the right direction. So just wanted to highlight those things because sometimes when we get, we will die, they, they're, they're very popular. But when they're alive, people say they're troublemakers, they're agitators and there are people that shake it up. But thank God Dr. Tain shook it up 
so that we could be sitting up here, but now my responsibility is not for me to get my nameplate to change. My responsibility is use this position to make sure that we help everybody have an equal shot at the American dream. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Driehouse. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, thank you for bringing the resolution in front of us. Um, I will look forward to celebrating uh, Martin Luther King Day on Monday with the mm -hmm. community. There are so many celebrations and um, you know, they're really commemorative moments too so that we can uh, not only keep the memory and the actions of Dr. King alive but also remember the struggle um, that not only he went through but so many went through to make the progress um, that we still continue to work on today. So um, I, I appreciate being part of the resolution and the proclamation and um, I'll look forward to celebrating with the rest of the community on Monday. Thank you so much. And the, the purpose of the proclamation is exactly that, to bring awareness to Dr. King and the things that he's done and what he did and what he left, his legacy that he left. And that's why we had the proclamation. I will move forward to public comments. We have Jeff Capel. Good afternoon. The uh, last time I was here, I encouraged support for Commissioner Reese's motion to grant the full property tax rollback, and I appreciate that the commission unanimously did pass that. And I also talked a little bit about the even the larger issue about how putting public money into stadiums is about the worst use of tax dollars that there is. And I wanted to talk about that further, especially as our capital budget process is now underway. Now, for both of the last two capital budget processes, the number one recipient of capital budget funds in this county was FC Cincinnati. And that is astonishing to me that anybody could be traveling around Hamilton County, look around, and then say, you know what? The biggest need that this county has is to put more money into stadiums. Um, I could go on about how that really happens, campaign contributions, but uh, that's, that's not the purpose of me being here. Um, what I do hope happens is that um, we don't do that three times in a row. It's important that when we get money from the state of Ohio that we're putting the, the money into projects that the, the region really needs, projects that ha whether it's an economic impact or something that helps people, that's what we need to focus on. And we also need to look at um, why the region puts its pro uh, has, has the process it has for establishing those, those priorities. Why is the Cincinnati Business Committee the group that, that collates these requests and then decides what's more important than other projects? Who elected them? I don't remember voting for the Cincinnati Business Committee, but I did elect county commissioners and state senators and state legislators. We need our elected officials to do more, to step up and to do their jobs to make sure that the projects that should be funded are the ones that do get funded. We know when groups like the Cincinnati Business Committee say where public money should go, they're dealing from the side of the deck that benefits them more than anybody else. And we need to do better on this. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for coming down and taking the time to speak. Uh, we have one additional speaker on Zoom, Carrie Davis. Good afternoon, ladies. Um, Good afternoon. Thank you for bringing up Martin Luther King. I'm really proud when I go to the meetings and I see our three commissioners walking in the footsteps of Martin Luther King by promoting policies that consider equity and the impact on um, disadvantaged populations. At the December 16th meeting, you passed rules, a historical measure that historically has impacted poor and disadvantaged and disempowered um, communities. So it's, you should be very proud of yourselves and um, walking in Martin Luther King's footsteps. Um, secondly, uh, Ms. Reese, you had mentioned at the meeting that you needed to be um, more up to date and informed, and I'm sorry if I didn't inform you well. Um, I, I just want to open that door and let you know that over the net course of the next year, the Solid Waste Committee is going to be doing a deep dive into this entire program and hopefully revamping it considering all factors. And I, um, I'm hopeful we'll have conversations as this process goes on. 
um, because we want you on board. Uh, we believe you support this initiative and, um, and I'm available to bring you up to speed. Um, off topic, I want to say I was reviewing the agenda because I was um, going to speak today and thank you all for your work for Solid Waste. But I, I saw something on the agenda that I just want to bring to your attention. I was concerned that we're spending $270 an hour for someone to train and assist um, our community development department in complying with the regulations. And that at $270 an hour, that's a total of 11 weeks work, topping out at about 120,000 a year. I'm really concerned why our, our department doesn't have a director who is fluent in regulations. That would seem to be the number one criteria. So I'm a little bit concerned about that and the, the, the use of those monies. Um, on your agenda, you also have the sidewalk plan. And I have seen Ms. Reese and Ms. Dumas um, both question Mr. Aluto about what can we do um, because essentially what you're doing is identifying poor people who own property and then adding to their debts where they may not be able to afford their food, you know, or medicine, you know, and then we're going to add to their tax bill with the sidewalk program. And that led me down a path where I talked uh, to Mr. people D working Ms. Davis? Yeah, I'm sorry. Can, yeah, you ran out of time and maybe you can talk about that path the next time you call. If you can hold on to- Just consider PWC and funding them. That I'll wrap it up real quick with that. Okay. We're missing a lot of people. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for calling in. And I won't talk specifically about pay rates on people, but what we try to do is to make sure we're consistent uh, in the community and in the national uh, area as it relates to wages and uh, how much they should be paid. We always take a look at that uh, whenever we uh, decide on what someone should be paid. And so I uh, just want to let you know that uh, we did take time to look at what the appropriate wage should be for that person. So, but thank you for bringing up your concerns. Okay, we will move forward. Um, and we have comments and motions and I will get started. And as you know, this is our first legislative meeting for 2022. It is certainly my honor to serve the citizens of Hamilton County this is my fourth year on the commission, second year as president of the commission. And we are currently uh, experiencing living through some difficult times as we all know, primarily due to this health emergency, the likes of which we have not experienced during our lifetime. According to the 2020 census, the population of Hamilton County has increased to 830,639 citizens making us the third most populous county in the state of Ohio. And I want to give kudos to those people that were out there during the pandemic getting those numbers for us because it does impact our ability to get funding. The commission will do all we can do to serve the needs of our people, every one of our citizens. On Tuesday, I presented a resolution and my colleagues joined me in declaring a state of emergency in Hamilton County. The declaration is meant to get everyone's attention regarding how dangerous this different variants of COVID-19 is and the hospital and how the hospitals are full. I see units are at their capacity and deaths are increasing. The state of emergency allows our administrator to move quickly in assessing and assisting. And there will be always be room for improvement. We're, we're every day looking at how we can do more as it relates to this virus. Our hands are really tied somewhat. Uh, the governor, uh, his hands are tied also really because the legislature decided they didn't want him, him to have the authority uh, as we look at mandates. So, but in this county building, we do have a mandated mass uh, process. However, I want to say I'm proud of the work our colleagues have done along with our staff, and we're able to accomplish so many things, regardless of all the difficulties in 2021. And to finish the year with a structurally balanced budget is a huge accomplishment. We must not take that for granted. It has been decades since this has happened where we had reserves like we have now. 
It takes the work of all three commissioners and no less than a majority vote to get things done. And that's one thing I want to communicate to our residents that are listening. Anyone can bring forward an initiative, but you have to have at least two uh, commissioners that agree on that. So I'm glad that we're creative. We all think outside the box. We all have different ideas, but I can count on one hand the one the uh, items that were brought forward that were not voted on fully by our commission. I thank my colleagues for their dedication and determination to work together in delivering the best solutions that we can for our citizens. Getting to the best result can require multiple reviews. However, we will get the work done for the county. We are thankful for 2021 and getting through that, not only getting through, but thriving. I want to say clearly we are ready and will deliver to you in 2022. I want to make a note, um, a situation came forward to us that there was a young lady and they called Lincoln Ware and the young lady informed Lincoln Ware that she applied and had been approved for rental assistance. Although her approved, her landlord had not been paid. The landlord informed the young lady that if payment was not given by Friday, January the 15th, that she would be put out. Can you imagine to be put out, just you, but even if you have children? Lincoln called out for help. One of the names he called out for was Bishop Bobby Hilton, knowing he was the chief of staff and wanted to get help for the family. Bishop was listening and responded immediately. We got the information to the young lady, forwarded it to our staff. Our staff is just awesome, that's all I can say. And the case was solved the same day. So the family remained safe in their home. Lastly, I'm proud and honored to say with an affirmative vote of my colleagues today, uh, we will approve the promotion of Michael Patton as director of Hamilton County Job and Family Services. Michael has worked for the agency since 1993 and will become the first African American to lead this agency in the history of Hamilton County. Lastly, I had some items I wanted to mention as far as what meetings I went to this week, where I just came from. I don't think that's important right now because as a commissioner, you need to attend those meetings. Maybe I'll do it the next meeting. But one thing I do want to bring up, and I'll probably be like a broken record for the rest of the year. I will digress back to Martin Luther King because uh, as you often know, I quote him quite a bit. And one thing he said, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And the reason why I bring that up is Lincoln Heights gun range. We've been talking about this for a year and a half, maybe longer. I had an, a, a fifth, a, a fifth a, I had an epiphany. Sorry, it's hard with this thing on. An epiphany means you came to a realization. I started thinking about Lincoln Heights gun range. Actually, I think about it all the time because I can't get out of my vision that little three-year-old who was holding his ears with all this gun shots going on. So I, I can't stop thinking about it. An epiphany means a sudden striking realization of something. And I'm wondering to myself, I mean, why are we calling this the Lincoln Heights gun range? First of all, it's not in Lincoln Heights. They don't own the property. This is an Evendale gun range. The only way they're, they're being impacted negatively because of where this gun range is located. So when you hear me say, what are we doing about, this will be the last time I say the Lincoln Heights gun range. Not that anybody else has to change their perspective on it, but I will be calling it the Evendale gun range. Why should they take ownership for something that they're being negatively impacted from? And why are, why are they fighting on their own to make this change? This gun range is in Evendale. They allowed the Cincinnati Police Department to use it. And so we need more people to help with this effort. They should not have to do it alone. And as I said earlier, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. So if you are our friends and you care about those children, and those families that are there, the impact emotionally, psychologically, 
that's going on, please help us, help Evendale, help Lincoln Heights to get rid of this gun range. So that's all I have at this time, um, Commissioner Reese. Thank you very much. <clears throat> As this is our first official meeting, um, I guess business meeting, uh, I said it before, but I wanna say this again. I wanna thank the voters, over 200,000 of them, that came out uh, in a pandemic. I've won nine elections, but this one was different because we had to, we had elections stopped, we got new dates, people had to come out. We didn't have a vaccine. Um, we, we were told not to wear masks, then to wear masks, but then not to wear masks. It was just so much misinformation. Mm -hmm. And people came out and voted and I wanna thank them for their confidence uh, in me. We are each elected individually. And while once we get down here among ourselves, we may have different titles, but at the end of the day, we have the same one vote representing the people that voted for us. One of the things I heard when they were getting ready to shut down the state and seniors needed meals on wheels and we didn't have enough people volunteering, many had stayed home because afraid to come out. Uh, I got a chance to go out and I wanna thank those volunteers that went out to get these, we had to get additional meals because we didn't know when we were gonna reopen again. When I had a chance to do that, I got a chance to go all over the county and see seniors who had not seen people in a while and didn't know when they would see someone else. I got a chance to work with Evingston who did not have a, pan a food pantry and we were there giving out food, partnering with the Free Store Food Bank and now they have a food pantry. In that time, I got a chance to hear a lot of feedback from a lot of people who felt as though they were in it alone. Many people said, you know, do my, does my vote count? Because once you get there, you're gonna really do what you say you were going to do. And so I brought that energy to this county commission and we had to be creative. We had a swearing in that we had to put on ourselves and do it ourselves, couldn't do it in this building. This building, I, from what I was told, was closed. Most people were mo working from home. And so we came into the building and the day we're supposed to start, we had the second day have to vote on $61 million. We had to learn fast. And I say all that because I want to acknowledge my staff because they had no, we didn't have the orientation we didn't have, you know, no playbook, no blueprint. And we had to come in here and get to work even though we didn't have all the tools, whether it's the computer working, wasn't working, whether it was the, the, you know, the desk, you know, I had never experienced anything like that. But again, we had never had COVID. And we got in and we rolled up our sleeves and we stayed committed to what we said we were going to do. No title, no appointment, no committee, for me is bigger than what I told the people we would do. The government is, has been designed for each of us to be elected individually and there must be a reason for that. We don't run as a, a, a slate, we run as an individual. And then we come together and bring those individual ideas to, to the forefront. And so I'm excited to have brought the ideas of the people that I ran into. These are not my ideas. So we would say, I'm a, I, you know, I supported you. You didn't support me. You supported the 200,000 people that brought this idea. And so with that, I'm excited for what we were able to do uh, our first year. And I'm excited and thankful that my colleagues supported some initiatives that we presented, and we supported some initiatives that my colleagues pr presented. It, sometimes it wasn't easy. You have to do convincing, you've got to bring, we had, I wanna thank the NAACP because this, the bus was really an idea for came from the community, Joe Mallory. And they came and had to testify and even the Hampton University Dean had to testify of how this 513, it's called 513 relief bus now, but how would this bus work? We even had to go to the funeral home, Reverend uh, Walker funeral home. And so we were able to pull those pieces together and now we have what's called the 513 relief bus. And so then people say, well, what happened with the bus? Because I always believe in giving an ROI to the voters, just like any corporation. We must have a return on investment. 
And so with that, I'm very thankful to the staff, all the people that came out because initially they, the staff had to volunteer to do this. It was not a mandate. It was not said you had to do it. They had to volunteer to go out into the community. And when over 4,000 people have been helped, $18 million that's been out to help people with the rental assistance, keep your gas and electric on. Uh, we now have a home program for homeowners to help. We help some people with their mortgages. And we went everywhere from Cleves to Harrison to Avondale, Bond Hill, Evingston, you name it. Uh, but this came out of what the people put out there, and I want to thank them for it. Uh, I've produced a report to the people for 20 years. I felt when I first got elected that we should do, if you vote, because I'm asking you to vote for me individually, I need to individually tell you what did I lead on? What did I get accomplished? Um, and so that you would have an update. And so we have a report to the people. It started out as a, a black and white thing. We didn't even have social media back then, but now we have a full color copy and you can also get it online so that you know what, what did we do and what did my staff do? What did we put our time on? And so we're very pleased that some things that we were able to help lead on, um, other things we were able to help support. We're very uh, thankful that we were able to, the gentleman spoke earlier, the 30%, uh, you know, we pushed back. It was, it, the administration said 10%. We looked at the numbers and we were on board right away. So let's just push for 30. I don't know if it'll pass, but we are gonna push for it. And, I, and I'm very thankful that it unanimously passed. So these are some of the things that we did in 2021. We're excited to continue to work in 2022 and pushing forward on some initiatives, making sure these things get completed. The Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame to be hopefully completed as a tourism attraction. Um, and we're looking forward to those things. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention with Dr. King, uh, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, who is an advisor, has been an advisor to me, the great civil rights national leader who was here uh, and, and pastored here. But if it wasn't for people like him and Reverend Booth, Paul Booth's father, uh, who walked out of National Baptist because they wouldn't let him present his case, uh, who stood up to Bull Connor and bullies and said, I, we won't be bullied. Uh, who protested and said, we won't be popular, we might have to protest. Um, and I want to thank them because uh, Reverend Moss is a, an advisor, continue to be an advisor to me today. And if it wasn't for them as young people walking out, we may not be having a Dr. Martin Luther King Day uh, today. Uh, in addition to that, just some go things going forward <clears throat> in 2022. Uh, I've said that we are in a state of emergency in multiple areas and one dealing with, we have a backlog of people who have been approved. Uh, our office keeps a log uh, from day one. We didn't even have a computer and people were up here saying, we need some help and we were writing it down with a pencil. But my office keeps a log uh, of everybody that calls us, emails us, writes us, and we follow up what happened with it. I'm concerned that the backlog is getting big. And so before we start pulling in new people, uh, I've asked for a 60-day uh, plan that could be presented to us, hopefully next week, on how we're going to get this backlog. Uh, we did a relief-a-thon uh, that I was excited to uh, help create. That relief-a-thon needs to be phones, everybody on the phones. Let's get these people paid. Let's get these landlords who are small businesses paid. Let's get the people be able to stay in their homes. Let's get Duke Energy, Duke Energy has even called me, said how can they help, they, they don't wanna cut these people lights off. So uh, I think one of the major states of emergency is the 60 day plan that over the next 60 days, we're gonna clear this out and get it down to almost zero. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully getting that plan presented to us publicly next week so that everyone who's watching, who's been calling, who's concerned, knows what the actual plan is as well as I know we had our RFP come in for testing. I'm excited to see how fast that's going to hit the street. Um, Iris Rowley had contacted our office about New Prospect Baptist Church doing some testing and wanted to see what kind of funds were available because I know they're all volunteering. Um, and I know the lab is not volunteering. So we need to figure out what is available uh, and what is our testing plan 
Um, last but not least, um, I'm wearing orange. I'm wearing orange. I want the Bengals to win. We have not won a playoff game in 30 years. There's lots of uh, sporting events. Xavier had a big game last night, sellout crowd. We lost to Villanova right at the end. I tried to, had to stay up to watch that game. Um, I saw Taft play Woodward. That was a great game. Um, and uh, Woodward beat Taft barely, and that was just a great game. So again, uh, tomorrow they're asking everyone on Friday, wherever you are, to wear orange. Uh, and so uh, let's, so, let's throw some solidarity. And uh, the Bearcats did a great job. I want to tell the Bearcats football team, we're proud of you. Thank you so much for what you've done. Uh, but tomorrow, let's, and Friday, let's put on the orange. I'm going with the Bengals. I want to see uh, Joe Burrow bring the hot sauce, mix and mix it up. And I want to look for uh, Jamar Chase to bring the Bayou flavor. So uh, good luck to the Bengals, and uh, let's wear the orange wherever you are tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, yeah, I want to note, too, that it's our first legislative meeting of the year, and I'm looking forward to working with both of you uh, here in the coming year to move our agendas forward. Um, I just have a couple of things to note. Uh, one is that I attended a, a ribbon cutting in the opening of Freedom Home up in Springdale Township, um, the, uh, or, or rather Springdale. The mayor was there and the director of our Department of Developmental Disabilities was there, Leah Snyder. And we are um, supporting and we are committed to providing housing for people with disabilities in this community. And the Freedom Home was just one more example of how we're doing that. So I was glad to represent the commission at that event. And then lastly, um, our one-stop shop he has kind of, um, been going and coming and going um, as the COVID has impacted how we do business related to conveying information and being supportive of people who are um, re-entering our community or suffer with issues of mental health or addiction. It, but the one-stop shop is going to be open again tomorrow on Friday at the Duke Convention Center from 10 to 1. It is a place where people can go, um, whether they need to you know, get their driver's license renewed, whether they need to look for some kind of housing, whether they need contacts for employment. This one stop uh, led by Trina, um, who is with our uh, Department of Reentry and Tom Sinan out in Newtown. Um, you know, the Hamilton County Addiction Response Coalition has always been very involved in this. And so I'm glad we're able to do it once again. It'll be spread out because it's at Duke. And I'm very grateful uh, to Duke for being willing to host this once again. So I just want to make that announcement 10 to 1 tomorrow at Duke Energy Center. Thank you. Thank you. And as you mentioned about the Freedom Home, uh, last our last meeting, we filled uh, two vacancies in the Developmental Disabilities uh, board because we wanted to make sure that no matter what board or commission comes vacant that we want to fill those gaps right away so i'm glad we were able to do that secondly on um the 19th there will be COVID testing uh here and vaccinations right here in our building 138 east court street from 11 to 2 is that correct 11 to 2. okay down in our lobby we had a great uh attendance the last time so um, we have someone who's on the line would like to make a comment. They were just a little late raising their hand and I did not want to ignore them because they took time to call. So uh, Derek Blassingame. And it looks like he just fell off. Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe he didn't want to wait or, okay. Yeah, he, he said he was kicked out but he's back and then he, uh, uh -huh. he's not in right now. Okay, all righty. So we'll go to Jeff Aluto, our county administrator. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> and you uh, stole my thunder on the uh, vaccination clinic, but that, oh, that's, that, that's okay. fine. Um, so that was really my, my comment for today. I do have two uh, by leave items. I'm gonna, with your indulgence, I'm gonna take them in reverse order. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm gonna start with uh, uh, what is by leave number two. Okay. And that, this by leave, uh, and you have all mentioned it in your, uh, in your comments uh, leading up to my by leaves and it's my pleasure at this point in time uh, to introduce a resolution, I believe it's by leave two in your packet uh, that would uh, appoint Michael Patton uh, as the next director of the Hamilton County Department of Job and Family Services. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, this resolution comes to you after uh, an extensive 
uh, search process over the past several months uh, involving both community stakeholders and internal staff, um, internal employee groups. And I want to thank Michael uh, for his uh, passion, his energy through the process, also his patience uh, through the process as we've continued on uh, with it. Uh, Commissioner uh, or President uh, Summer Dumas, you had indicated Michael had started his uh, career with uh, Job and Family Services back in the 1990s. Even some folks might, might not know, Michael uh, spent time as a loaned executive uh, mm -hmm. from Job and Family Services to County Administration under then uh, County Administrator David Krings. That's actually where Michael and I first met uh, <laughs> when I was at a department and Michael and I had a chance to interact on some projects. Uh, when we were both much younger uh, than, than we are today. Uh, but Michael then went on to advance uh, through multiple positions at Job and Family Services, through multiple section chief positions, to his current role as Assistant Director for Child Support Enforcement. Um, through the process, one of the things that has stood out to me is just um, uh, Michael's passion for the organization, uh, his loyalty to the organization, his dedication to the community, and that's been some of the things that have just uh, really uh, stood out that have, uh, make him an ideal fit for this position. I think he's going to do great things uh, on behalf of uh, the Job and Family Services organization, uh, on behalf of the employees of Job and Family Services, and on behalf of all of its stakeholders and clients, uh, not the least of which are some of the most vulnerable uh, individuals in our community, especially as we navigate both the, the, a health and economic related crisis uh, through COVID-19. Through COVID so, um, Madam President, it's with, it's with that that I will um, uh, tee this resolution up to you for any uh, additional comments and for mm -hmm. comments of the uh, Board of County Commissioners. Thank you so much, Jeff. I'll open it up to Vice President Reese. Do you have any comments? Yes, I want to say that today is historic um, for a variety of reasons and obviously um, being the first African-American to lead our largest organization. But more importantly, it's not just the aesthetics, but the mindset. He has committed his life. It has become a calling for him to have been with us so long, working from the bottom, understanding the department from the ground up, but also being a part of the community. Uh, he's very active with his fraternity, uh, active with his church, uh, and is very committed to the work of helping our youth. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of people that come through the program, um, a lot of them are African-American and African-American males. He's done a lot of work with fatherhood, training African-American fathers, which is critical to bring the family unit back together, and uh, has been on the ground working with that. Uh, he can also be a role model that someone watching to see how to do it the right way versus a lot of times we put a lot of uh, media attention on when you're doing it the wrong way. Uh, so hopefully that there's some young man that might be out there looking and say that I can be a Michael Patton. Uh, so we are very excited to have him uh, hit the ground running. He's coming at a critical time where we are at a crossroads with that department in terms of delivering services maybe a little differently than we have had to in the past because of the pandemic and other challenges. But I see it as a great opportunity uh, because one of the things I've said is that I'd like to see Jaws of Family Services move to a customer-based model uh, where it's customer first. Uh, and I think that would be great. Um, it was a time when people that looked like Michael Patton and myself, and Madam President, that we couldn't even get a job. My mother was one of them. Qualified, but they said you didn't fit the description. And today to break all those barriers with someone who is qualified, but also committed and connected to the community, I think is a great thing. So I'm excited for, I don't, I don't wanna say get started cause he's been started, but I'm, I'm excited for him to elevate. I also think it helps us from an HR perspective at a time where we're recruiting people to let people know that you could come into Hamilton County um, and start at a certain level and you can move up, you can be promoted. You can, there is uh, opportunity for upward mobility and that's what people wanna know when they get hired. So I also think that's a, a great opportunity as well as the opportunity during our time when we're saying we're gonna have an internship, uh, an aggressive internship fellowship program. People can look and say there can be mobility uh, in this career set. So excited about it and looking forward to uh, getting started, and I think we already <laughs> put something on your plate. We're saying 60 days, I wanna get this thing cleared out so these people can get these, these checks and keep their homes. So congratulations and 
we're looking forward to working together with you. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, Michael, congratulations. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you in your new role as the director of JFS. You know, when I think about the county, and, and I think we all get asked all the time, hey, what exactly does the county do? Um, it's, it's kind of out here somewhere. And, and if you haven't interacted with the justice system or the jail or JFS, sometimes I think people are really unaware of how important the work of the county is, especially the work of JFS where we interact with the most vulnerable people in this community, whether they're seniors, whether they're children, whether they're people in crisis, JFS is the front line for the, uh, the county to respond through all these programs that we talk about you know, day in, day out. And it is so critical and so important that we have a director at the helm that understands those needs and has a passion to deliver to those individuals in their times of crisis. So I am excited to, um, that you've been named as the director. I look forward to working with you. Um, we, I think all our offices do, but our office has a lot of interaction with JFS as requests and concerns come to our office and as we're moving around in the community. So I'm, I'm very excited that you're, um, you're willing to lead the organization. Uh, we've got challenges ahead, but we also have a lot to stand on. We've made a lot of progress, especially related to um, children's services, and I'm looking forward to your leadership as we continue that work. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm also very excited about Mr. Patton, um, his commitment to the agency. Uh, he stayed, and he wanted to help, and he continued to help. His expertise in so many areas, I'm also very excited about. And also, I'm looking forward to uh, new ideas, new initiatives. Um, but I would also be remiss if I did not think, as Maura Ware uh, left, uh, Tim McCartney filled in in those gaps. And then Amy Story filled in and did a fantastic job. So I want to thank them publicly for what they did before they decide or uh, decide to move on. Well, all of them have moved on other than Amy, so. But I just want to thank them for um, just being invested in JFS, so. Uh, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution by leave to the resolution approving an employment agreement for Second. the director of Hamilton County Department of Job and Family Services. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite Mr. Patton to come up if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Madam, <clears throat> Madam President, mm -hmm. Vice President Reese, Commissioner Driehaus. Um, it's an honor to serve as the next Director of Job and Family Services. I've spent my entire career serving the public in one capacity or another and I'm excited for the opportunity to lead this incredible organization into the future. I'd like to acknowledge everyone who's come before me, who's encouraged me along my path at Job and Family Services. I'd also like to thank my many managers, peers, coworkers, and professional associates who have provided friendship and guidance to me over the years. But I am particularly grateful for people like Charles Wood and Cynthia Smith and Barb Manuel and Bill Beck. I'm here today because of their example and their courage and their representation. Um, and so that's important to me and I wanted to make sure I acknowledge them publicly because they were people who I looked up to as a young caseworker uh, who demonstrated to me the ability uh, to move up in an organization, to take on important leadership responsibilities and to do it well. And finally, I want to thank the, the staff at Job and Family Services. They're compassionate, they're committed, and they're talented. I appreciate the resilience that they've shown and the incredible work they do to serve the community day in and day out. And I'm ready to get to work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And if you can stay up there, we're going to come down and take a picture oh, with you. Sure. OK.
Very good. So we will move forward to our regular agenda well, items. Um, I have a, yes. one more by leave. Uh, we, I, I'm oh, sorry, okay. I took the uh, by leaves out of, out okay, of order. Okay, that's right. Yeah, okay. Thank uh, you, so Jeff. Uh -huh. You're very welcome. Uh, next by leave, not nearly as exciting, but no. um, <laughs> uh, resolution or by leave number one uh, is a resolution uh, to certify delinquent sewer charges at 1120 uh, Town Street. <laughs> this is a uh, resolution that will certify to the auditor $11,693.53. This property is going to sheriff sale and will make it more likely that those sewer charges can be recouped out of those sale proceeds. I know Jack Renekamp is here from uh, MSD is capable of, of uh, expounding further on this item if there are any questions, but if not, the administration recommends approval. Thank you so much. Any uh, questions or comments? Nope. Nope. Make a uh, motion to adopt by leave one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Treehouse. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, we have our public hearing and we're a little bit behind. I apologize. Sort of kind of apologize. <coughs> so we have our public hearing. We're a little bit behind. So, Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, public hearing for the 2021-2022 sidewalk replacement. Um, the county engineer's office on behalf of the commissioners inspects one-fifth of the sidewalks along county roads annually. We put together a program to repair those that are structurally deficient, have our tripping hazards, hazards, safety hazards, drainage issues, and, and put together a repair program for that. All the property owners have been notified. Um, letters were sent out to them on in December, notifying them of this, this hearing. They've worked with our administrator, Greg Flammer, who administers the program and uh, we, we handle, uh, the, the, I know we talked about the cost last year to the individual homeowners. It averages about four to $500 for, for those sidewalk sections that need to be replaced. Um, the county engineer cannot use their restricted funds to do sidewalks, so the sidewalks along county roads are the responsibility of the property owner. This is, uh, uh, you know, we're trying to handle the safety issues at, at, during this inspection. So this is the first of two hearings to receive any comments from the property owners regarding this process. Thank you. Is anyone here to speak to the, this hearing today? Okay. Did you have any? Is he speaking as it relates to that sidewalks? Hello? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't even realize this was a public hearing. I would have saved my other comments, but this lets me expand a little bit on what I was saying. Um, we are putting more debt on a lot of people who are on fixed incomes, who are on food stamps, and for every 10 bucks we throw on them in debt, that's 10 bucks for food they don't have. I interviewed a woman in the county, not the city, but in the county um, who is on Social Security fixed income. And she expressed to me that this little increase doesn't seem like much to anybody else. But when it's in her budget and the alternative is um, what meds she can afford and what food she can buy that month because her um, property taxes are going up, um, that it becomes very real very quickly. Um, I gave this same comments to the Coleraine Township when they adopted a sidewalk um, program like this and said, why are we charging these poor people interest? Why are we making any profit off of this program when the community block grant money is supposed to be helping these people, not putting them further in debt and increasing their burden. I suggested to them that we use a formula already used in um, real estate taxes where we at first at least look at 
um, the homestead program where if you're over a certain age or disabled, we reduce the amount of taxes we are charging them in the first place for real estate. And we apply that same program to the sidewalk program and provide an opportunity for people to say, look, I'm destitute poor and this increase in my real estate taxes is taking money out of my medicine or my food budget. Thank you, Mr. Davis. And, Ms. Davis. Am I done? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate I don't it. Know the okay. Thank you so much for your input. Now, uh, is that related to the sidewalk program? He said sure. Well, okay, we'll see because we may have to. Okay. Mr. Blassingame? Yeah, Derek Blassingame here. Thank you for the opportunity to address this commission in your first official meeting of 2022. <clears throat> As it relates to sidewalks, I want to bring to your attention one of the great things that you all have done, and that is to cooperate with the development uh, of FC Cincinnati. Now, I know there's a lot of critics related to this, but just imagine the tax revenues that the city of Cincinnati and the county will be able to collect to help fund these sidewalks, sidewalk projects around Hamilton County, because FCC has made great contributions. They brought in new revenues for both the city and Hamilton County, FCC has helped revive the local economy, created a microeconomy for the West End small business districts. Uh, FCC has also created massive amounts of foot traffic in downtown, the banks, and over the Rhine. FC Cincinnati will build a new 21st century office building that will attract new jobs, new businesses, and generate new tax revenues, and also sidewalks. Regarding the gun range in Lincoln Heights, the city of Cincinnati and, and and Mayor uh, Kenzie Mumphrey's administration is in talks to resolve this matter, I think the county commissioner should leave that alone. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that the Ohio General Assembly expressly gives county commissioners specific and limited authority. The Board of County Commissioners holds title to all county properties, serves as the sole taxing authority for the county, and controls county purchasing. This body has become more of an extension of job and family services. Your job is very simple. Derek Blassingame, Government Watchdog. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I will make a motion to close this hearing. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. We have an additional hearing. Thank you. Uh, the next hearing is for a proposed name change to Hunter's Run Court, changing that to Hunter's Run Lane. This is uh, per request from Sims Township. Uh, all the property owners on this street petition to change the name. Uh, originally, this uh, subdivision was dedicated in 1985. Uh, it's, it appears that the, the name Hunter's Run Court and Hunter's Run Lane both appeared on the dedication plat. Uh, the county auditor's office and property record lists the uh, street as Hunter's Run Lane. Um, the, all the post office and all the property owners have Hunter's Run Court and would uh, like to continue it to be Hunter's Run Court. And this would allow the township to install the proper street blades on the, on the streets. And this is a uh, public hearing for any comments. Well, you sort of said something a little different. So can you make your last uh, statement? Cause you, you indicated that they wanted to ke uh, keep the Hunter's Run Court. It was Hunter's Run Court and they, it's currently their addresses say Hunter's Run Lane, but the auditor has it hunters run court okay so hunters run lane right. is the correct name that uh, this will allow the township to install correct street blades mm -hmm. thank you any comments or questions i do have a question yes. um so uh two things the difference between a court and a lane is there any financial there's really no difference to it yeah it's okay and then there's no cost to that there is no cost true. involved in this now awesome thank you Commissioner Driehaus. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. We're going to move forward now um, to the regular agenda. Thank you. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, I would like to note um, the passing of former Hamilton County engineer Bill Brayshaw. He passed last week. Oh. Um, he was a public servant for over 50 years and uh, will be missed. 
Yeah, and uh, sure. I, I owe a great deal to, to his tutelage in, in the past. So. Well, thank you for that. We'll certainly be sure to recognize him. The board will. Thank you. His family and everything. So. Um, the first item we have is a resolution authorizing a license agreement between Hamilton County Engineer and Martin Marietta for the installation of a culvert under Lawrenceburg Road. This will allow them to do their utility work and um, material movement under the road safely. They own both sides of the road. There's no cost involved with this. They will be doing all the installation, maintenance, and ownership. Thank you so much. Any comments or questions? Make a motion to adopt resolution one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two is a resolution authorizing agreement relative to the improvement of Spring Grove Avenue between the Village of St. Bernard and the Board of County Commissioners. This is um, allowing us to transfer the money from the municipal road fund that was our previously approved to the Village of St. Bernard for their improvements on Spring Grove Avenue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Make a motion to adopt item number two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Item number three is a resolution authorizing the 2022 amended and restated lease agreement between the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners, the Board of Trustees of Delhi Township, and the Board of Oak Hills Local School District for the use of a rubber tired loader. Uh, this is part of our ongoing agreement with the, t the township and the school to uh, maintain and share equipment and resources to, uh, for assault. So this is for a rubber tired loader, $2,960 out of uh, road and bridge funds. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Did we not have one of these items before for the rubber? Uh, we tired. have several of them. We have, I believe, four different townships and okay. municipalities that we have these similar agreements with. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I make a motion to adopt item number three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. All right. Item number four is a resolution setting a viewing and hearing dates and directing the Hamilton County engineer to prepare and submit a survey, plat, and report on the proposed location and establishment of portions of Fields Erdl Road and Snyder Road in Section 1 and 31, Township 3 and 4, Entire Range 2 and Sycamore, and Sims Townships, Hamilton County, Ohio, as provided by Section 5553 of the Ohio Revised Code. This is for the roadway improvements to Fields Erdl Road and Snyder Road. This will allow us to establish and move ahead with uh, right-of-way purchases. Um, we'll so set the hearing date or the viewing, excuse me, the viewing date of February 8th and the <coughs> hearing date of March 3rd for this project. Okay. Can we have a breakdown of the monies where they're coming from? Yes. Um, the, the project's approximately $15 million. Um, that's being split. But this is a joint project between the Warren County Engineer's Office, Hamilton County, and the Warren County TID. We have federal funding for this project. Uh, the remainder of the funding will be split 50-50 between Warren County and Hamilton County. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, I make a motion to adopt item number four. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five is resolution authorizing an agreement with Dunrob and Associates for pre professional appraisal services and acquisition of right-of-way easements for the improvement of Fields Ertle Road. This is the same project that we're doing the hearing on. Uh, this will allow them to go out and do appraisals on the parcels that we need and uh, perform negotiations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions or comments? No. Make a motion to adopt item number five. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number six is a resolution approving an agreement with a property owner for right and privilege to enter on the and to purchase right-of-way parcels in connection with the Cleman Court Bridge Project located in Green Township. This is a standard highway easement and it's uh, $1,000 out of permissive auto funds. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Make a motion to adopt item number six. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Item number seven is also a right-of-way 
uh, issue. This is a resolution approving the agreement with the property owner for the right and privilege to enter upon right of way parcels in connection with the Howard Road resurfacing and culvert replacement. This is for the purchase of a temporary easement, $700, again, out of permissive auto funds. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments? I make a motion to adopt item number seven. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Treehouse. Yes. Thank you. Item number eight, a resolution approving an agreement with soil and materials engineering for the professional engineering services for the improvements of the Cliff Road landslides. Um, they will perform engineering and, design and create construction plans. It's uh, $74,188 out of permissive auto. Thank you so much. Questions, comments? Make a motion to adopt item number eight. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Rees. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. All right. Res uh, number nine is a resolution approving a second amendment to the traffic signal maintenance agreement with Cap Capital Electric Line Builders. Um, this is an extension of the existing contract. Capital Electric performs our emergency traffic signal maintenance work. And this will allow up to $75,000 in 2022 out of the road and bridge funds. Okay. So the reason we have zero is what? It's up it's to? It's an as needed up to $75,000. Okay. okay. Thank you. Questions, comments? Make a motion to adopt item number nine. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And the final one is a resolution uh, for an intergovernmental agreement with Miami Township for the rental of a rubber tied loader mm -hmm. for the 2021 22 snow and ice season for the use of my at the Miami Township Salt Dome. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, $2,000 coming out of the uh, road and bridge fund. Okay. And the other uh, from the 10,000, where's the other money coming from? Uh, this one is split between us and Miami Township. Okay. Questions, comments? Make a motion to adopt item number 10. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we'll move to our consent agenda items. We actually have items 11 through 31, and I will open it up for uh, Vice President Reese if you have any questions or comments. Um, no questions, but I do want to highlight that uh, in this uh, consent, these consent items, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we also have agreements with uh, the sheriff uh, patrolling with uh, the village of Silverton, as well as uh, was one other. And I didn't know if the administrator could maybe just uh, highlight those two or bring us up to date on them. Um, Madam President, Madam Vice President, yes, there, there's a. Uh there's one patrol contract uh, mm -hmm. here, uh, which is exactly as you said. It's an agreement with the uh, the village of, of Silverton for police protection services. This is the patrol contract uh, for the village. It's a three-year contract uh, running the years through 2022, 23, and 24. This is for one 24-hour shift and one 12-hour shift, seven days a week. Uh, the contract is broken up over three years. That's a total uh, contract value of, of 2.578 million. I believe the first year in 20, uh, in, this year in 2022 uh, is 816,000, uh, 857,000 the next year, and around 903,000 in the third year. So this uh, uh, continues our very strong partnership with the Village of Silverton and the Sheriff's Office to make sure that we're providing uh, public safety patrol services out in our communities. Thank you. I just wanted to um, also uh, thank the administration. I know you're working with a lot of the municipalities that have the sheriff uh, patrols, and I know you're working with Sheriff McGuffey on those. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight this is one that's moving forward. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus? Nothing. M Madam President. And I just wanted to I'm mention sorry. our collective bargaining agreements, uh, items 22, 23, and 24, uh, which is awesome that we were able to as if I was in there, Frank, but Frank, I want to thank you and all our lawyers and also Jeff uh, for moving forward and for the unions agreeing to uh, a, an agreement as we move forward in 22. Um, so that's also on there. Jeff, did you want to comment? Yes, Madam President, thank you. Uh, just a, a, 
earlier on in the public comments, there was a, a comment um, uh, about item number 17, which is an agreement with the National Development Council, and there was a, a concern about the, the contract and, the, mm -hmm. and whether or not that should be something that's outsourced from uh, internal staff. And, mm -hmm. and I can understand a member of the public who might be watching who doesn't understand um, the current dynamic in our community development office where uh, we have had a very strong expertise in our community development office on um, all of our federal entitlement programs, CDBG, Home Emergency Solutions Grant. Um, unfortunately, we have seen the, uh, the exit, exit of both our director and our assistant director uh, in community development. We have two people uh, in that uh, shop right now who are doing an excellent job holding down the fort, uh, but National Development Council has provided us technical assistance in the past, uh, and they're an ideal solution to help us bridge uh, the, the, the divide, if you will, until we uh, can bring on additional director, assistant director. And we're in the process of doing that right now and close, hopefully, to making a hire for the director position uh, shortly. But I uh, just wanted to provide some context for why we would be contracting out for that type of expertise mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time as opposed to relying on in-house staff. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. Okay. We will move forward then with no further comments. Um, um, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda items number 11 through 31. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I will end our meeting like I normally do. If there are any additional comments that either of my colleagues would like to make, we certainly could do that now. Commissioner Reese? No more comments. Okay. No comments. No comments. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you.